Back, WNST, Tassin, Baltimore, and Baltimore Positive. It says so out on the wrapper. I am back from a, a week off. I did a little music last week, a little rock and roll from my Dundalk and Essex roots. And it's been a little while since I caught up with this guy. I think last time we caught up, we were talking about Brandon Scott uh, winning the primary. Doing a little political stuff, but we've got patriotism, the 4th of July, and a no heritage fair parade in Dundalk this year. Todd Schuler's our pal over at Blondell Miller Schuler, former delegate, waiting for baseball, waiting for football. But more than that, it's summertime, man. I had a little vacation last week down in Nag said, You're sending me notes saying, hey, I'm going down there in a couple weeks. What's going on down there with the mask thing? Dude, I wish I, I had had a better explanation for why people, and I guess in this country, we have politicized everything. We've now politicized a virus. I, I can't fathom why people weren't wearing masks in North Carolina. It's not like this is a new thing, right? I don't know. I was, I was out in Essex uh, on the water <laughs> uh, this Saturday, and uh, it was a little mask-free around the marina bars. Uh, it was a little creepy. I, I don't know. Uh, I think that uh, people are loosening up. And uh, I just worry that we're not doing it too too fast. Uh, and I'm I am concerned about about Outer Banks. I'm going right to where you were, and you know those Outer Banks vacations are a little different than Ocean City, just because I think the towns were built 20 years later and the houses are bigger, and you know you're not in these condo type scenarios. Well, you also can't follow. walk anywhere. You, you know, like I mean, you can walk within a you know a block or three, or you could take a bike or whatever. But you're not walking to Awful Arthur's from mile marker eight. You know what I mean? Like right, right. you're just not. And so I, I would say more than anything that contact that we talk about the physical. That's why we went there, bro. Right? Like so, my wife and I have been married 17 years. I love the Outer Banks. For 17 years, I have said to her, I love the Outer Banks. We should go. We should go. We should go. Well, we should go means like we should get a house. Houses are expensive. You have to have friends or family or relatives because like why do the two of us need this giant house, right? We left White Marsh for that reason. Um, and I, I, I had never taken her. And the reason, you know the reason, right? It's two and a half hours to Ocean City. It's five hours to North Carolina, right? It's always sort of like, well, you know, do I really want to drive? And then you got to get a beach house for the week. And do I want to go for a week? Or do I just want to be gone for a weekend? So I, 17 years into this, we've never really gone. I've never gotten the brochure or gone online or looked for a house. But COVID changed that, right? So it becomes like we can't fly anywhere. So where can we drive where we could really get left alone and still be on the beach? And I thought like, bing, 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 bing. This is our great opportunity to do this, right? It was inexpensive. We did five days. We did a hotel. But man, I tell you, there, it's a different mindset. I mean, it's not its not what I've been living in in downtown Baltimore where literally walking around the harbor, almost everybody's been wearing a mask for four months, for, for the most part. Yeah, I got i got out of town as well. I went to, uh, we went to LeRae Caverns out in Shenandoah, Shenandoah oh, just yeah. me and my wife and kids for, for a couple of days. But just you see the bacon again, and the eggs? You saw that, right? What's that? You see the bacon and the eggs on the wall? The eggs? Saw the bacon and the Let's eggs, sure, yeah. Let's make sure. uh, it was pretty neat. Uh, yeah, it was awesome. and, a, and a different kind of thing. I'm a beach guy, you know, like, uh, so to be hiking. Well, they and have the mosquitoes mountains. in Luray. I don't, Nestor doesn't do mosquitoes. You know what I mean? I don't like, and my wife and I really, because she likes, you know, lakes and, and, in mountains and trees and like I'm like no 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 just if you give me a beach and a breeze keeps the bugs off me that's where I want to be that's, that's for a me. play yeah that's a play but but you know to get to do something different you know like it, it was all right but again like you're you're in like subway trying to get sandwiches for the kids and there were mask free folks there it was I hadn't seen it yet you know and then of course getting out on the water was yeah and and again the water I'm on my buddy's boat. It's just his family and mine, you know. We're not, like, on top of people. You get out to Hart Miller Island, you, you're spread out, and, you know, there's there's nothing to worry about there. But then you get back to those marina spots, like, oh, let's get a bite. And you peek in, and you're like, oh, I don't know. Mm. You know, like, it got a little, little, just a little spooky, I guess. Well, That's we went all. down to Dewey Beach um, three weeks ago at the beginning of June, and it was just like two. We did a Tuesday and a Wednesday, 
and it, it, it had just opened. It felt like nobody was going to be there. And you know what? Nobody was there. There were some June bugs, um, you know, senior weekers and whatnot, but it really was really low-key. We had breakfast the starboard outside. There weren't a whole lot of people around. It was a Wednesday morning, um, and it was cool. And we did two days down and back, got a little sun, got a little taste. The first thing we've done in 100 days, and we did not feel exp- – we walked a lot. We walked to Rehoboth, and – you know, a lot of stuff wasn't open. We didn't go to the boardwalk, and there were some people not minding, you know, social distancing, and, and so we stayed away from that. The Nags Head thing came up because it was the next great idea. It was like, all right, well, if we can't go anywhere, and and Todd, you and I will get into this, bro, and, and we're both big boys, and, we, and you were a politician, and I wanted to be a politician. I might still be. And there's only so much sunshine you can spread that becomes... PRBS and Moeller and I go back and forth about this. Like, are you just trying to spread sunshine or are you really being honest? I don't think they're playing football this year. And I and that's not me being Mr. You know, Dark Clouds. I just from a virus standpoint, I just can't conceive that this is going to happen and that I'm going to be on a plane to Houston in September, right? Like, uh, in the same way that I thought I was going to be seeing the Rolling Stones in Atlanta next week, I'm not. And the expectation in the bar of all that changes, and much like my wife's cancer, right, I, I have that Tommy Conwell song in my mind. There ain't no tomorrow, baby. There's just right now. And for us, it was like, let's go down to Nags Head. So I want to give you a little primer of what I saw, bro, because um, – you know, we got we got in the car and drove down there, and other than getting out to pump gas, and we sat outside in Norfolk at an outside bar and had a barbecue sandwich on the way down, and people were wearing masks inside. It was kind of like here, or what I would think to be here. Then we got to Nags Head, and it was totally different, man. From the minute we pulled in into the first gas station, into the first, like, where are we going to get our strawberries and blueberries for the week, and... Then there was like, let's yeah, let's go get some barbecue. Well, what are they doing in here? Let's go look for a bathing suit for you, honey, because her suit got dry rotted. Uh, you know, well, you put the mask on. and But by and large, it was the wild, wild west, Todd. And I'm not going to lie to you. And I was sort of blown. The hotel I was in, the staff weren't wearing masks. And it really weirded me out. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, that... And, you know, it's the instinct. It's almost like you get down and you get into the, the sunshine and the waves and, the, and the, the brain kind of shuts down. I mean, that's why we go on vacation in the first place, right, is to shut the brain off for a few days. But, like, once it's off, you know, like, people start doing goofy stuff, you know. And uh, I, I'm ner- I, the worst would be to come back here with, you know, like, I, you know, I had a friend uh, – I had a friend come back from Hilton Head with it, you know, and, wow. and it was the same kind of thing, like, ah, we finally broke free. This was in the last couple of weeks before the flare-up, I guess, started up again, and it was like, ah, we finally got that taste of freedom, and, and they described the same kind of thing. They get down to Hilton Head, and it's basically a free-for-all, and people are in bars, and they're in restaurants, and they're in stores, and dressing rooms, and, you know, and it, it just, she, she came back with it, and, uh, you know, she's, she's in good shape. As far as you know, as I can tell, but uh, but you'd hate to bring it. I'd hate to bring it and 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 shut my business down for a couple of weeks or, or keep myself out of it for a few weeks. You know, it would, it would be very very difficult. You know, for us, we wore masks everywhere. We you know we are Purell captains, right? Like from my wife's cancer battles. So my hands are all dry. It feels like winter. My fingers are all splitting because I've had so much Purell on because like we were sort of weirded out, you know and. Um, not so much that like we wouldn't go back next week. We would go back next week, stay somewhere else, and would not go into certain places. You know what I mean? Certain places, all the restaurants were really diligent, I must say. And I have a feeling that if you walked in without a mask, they would have thrown you out of most of the restaurants I was in. It was the other places. It was the trinket shops where they're not going to go into George and say, George, you know, put a mask on or don't be in here. Uh, because it was, you know, the Karen scene that we saw at the Trader Joe's online over the weekend. I, I have a feeling there were some very... The fact that you're not wearing a mask says to me you're defiant, right? You're not ignorant to the fact that you should be wearing one and that every sign on the highway the whole way down, and even if you don't read a newspaper, uh, you still sort of are, you know, online and know this thing's sort of going around. So when you're not wearing it, it really does speak to ignorance in the fact of ignoring science, ignoring recommendations, but... 
there, there really is a defiant thing going on here as I bring you, Todd Schuler, into Americana in the 4th of July. This is a different kind of 4th of July, isn't it? As I you know, went down and saw Confederate shorts for sale in North Carolina, we're arguing about everything in this country right now, aren't we? Oh, uh, yeah, we're coming apart at the seams a little bit, but I, I think as we talked last time, are, are we, uh, the moment of reckoning is uncomfortable at its best, right? And uh, it, we're in that, and and it's going to be a little uncomfortable, and we're going to have some difficult conversations, and we're going to get squeamish. I don't know that everybody is the people on the news, right? Like, people are you know, angry and, 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 and things are changing and monuments are coming down and, and there's a counter, you know, anger to all of that from these, you know, you know, however you want to phrase it. But, uh, well, I've said many times, Todd, and I, I talked about this, my, my mother died three summers ago. My mother was born in Ware Shoals, South Carolina, was raised in Abbeville, South Carolina. Her grandfather was a Civil War hero there is a mo- it's not a statue, but it's a giant plaque and like a bit of a monument uh, y- y- at the foot of her hometown of Abbeville, South Carolina, with her family name Thompson on it. And in her family, for the other cousins, they want to get their guns over in Georgia and come and protect. You know, it's all of that. And I see it. You know, I've sort of disconnected from some of that on Facebook, but I have it in my own family. Like literally. Oh sure. Th- that is part of my mother's heritage and her, you know, family. Um, the Confederate flag did not fly in my household or anywhere near me, and my mother had no, like, association to it one way or another, but her grandfather was a Civil War hero. Sure, and we got to – we're going to have to find where we're all comfortable, you know? Like, hey, that's, that's the moment of reckoning thing. Like, all of – and, by the way, we just did this. We just did this with Me Too. Like, when, when that happened – we as men had to assess all of our past behavior and all of our present behavior and all of our understanding of our relationship with women and the physical, uh, you know, differential in, in, in men and women and the, in the historic uh, problem. I mean, what do you well, do? Well, the power trip of that, right? Like, that, that's, right. that's what this has been about. It's been about power. It's been about masculine. It's about power, literally. I, that's... That's what we're in the streets about now, right? It's about sure. who has the power, who has the privilege, and how are they using that or abusing that, literally, right? But where, where are we, like, where are we with Confederate statues at Gettysburg? That's, that's the tough one for me, you know? Like, all right, here, here is living history, right? Like, the whole, uh, I, and by the way, Gettysburg is not just, as I found out, I only thought it was field trip battlefields. It's actually a cool little town, and there's awesome restaurants and, and bars and, and, and cool little boutique hotels and shopping and stuff. But that's a sidebar, uh, plug-in for Gettysburg. But what do you do with that? Like, uh, it's the same, like, what, where are we with uh, David Bowie and 14-year-old groupies? You know, like, that was the sort of Me Too thing. Like, what? Well, well, okay, like, you know, we're, we're going after Harvey Weinstein and we're taking him down, you know. But like, Every rock star's now, over. Now right? we Literally. also know that, the, you know, this rock god who changed the world was pretty creepy by today's standards, right? Like, so, where, where um, and, and I don't know, you know, like, I, I, I don't... Well, we'll talk about answers. Michael Jackson forever, right? Like, right, you know. right, exactly. But we'll will distill as a as a society into you know a place where everybody is comfortable and everybody is more comfortable and that that's actually a beautiful thing to to know that we're being more inclusive in who gets to decide where what monuments are up and and the way we recognize stuff and the way we talk about stuff and the way we remember stuff because if it's only white people and only white people from 150 years ago that get to decide, you know, what's important and what needs to be memorialized and commemorated, then we're not having a big enough conversation. So, you know, are, are Thomas Jefferson, is he going to come off of white Mount Rushmore because cause he owns slaves? Probably not. You know, like the line is probably inside of that. It's probably somewhere close to Confederate uh, statues at historic battlefields. You know, I, I don't... I don't know how that plays. You know, oh, when I was in the state house, 
you used to be able to give a great tour of the state house because it started with Roger B. Taney of Frederick, who was the only Supreme Court justice from the state of Maryland ever. He was sitting on the back porch, and he wrote the Dred Scott decision. And you could walk through the state house and find Thurgood Marshall on the other side. And Thurgood Marshall, of course, the first black Supreme Court justice, also from Maryland. Um, well, Taney's name was just taken off a boat, right? And and they took the Taney statue out of uh, out of the state house probably five or six years ago. And I, I mean, it certainly didn't shed any tears. It made for a nice walk through and 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 a good way to contextualize history. But it you certainly shed no tears that it was gone, you know. But um, 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 but it gave you know. It gave, I don't know where the line is, you know. Like I, I don't know what where we're going to to settle. But I know one thing, we're talking about it now, and for a long, long time, uh, Juneteenth wasn't talked about, right? Sure. I never, honest to God, never knew about the Tulsa Black Wall Street massacre. In my life, I had never heard of it. Uh, And, you know, obviously the Tulsa rally was planned on Juneteenth on that day, and people start talking about uh, that piece of American history that was never taught to me in any way, you know, like, so... Uh, well, maybe that'll be the upside of Trumpism at that point, because, you know, certainly it was malicious in intent, um, and uh, I I guess benign in action, you know, that 6,000 people showed up, right? Like, what an embarrassment. But, I mean, the embarrassments stack up. I mean, today's just Monday, you know, just wait till later in the week, right? Um, it, it really is an incredible time of American history we're living through right now, not to mention worldwide history. We're talking about coronavirus. And, you know, I, I used to sit here and talk about baseball and football, and instead we're talking about this virus and its impact on all of this this summer, right? And we're now at that sort of critical time as to whether, like, we're going to open the place back up, and as we open it back up, half the country's infected. I mean, th- th- this is a weird 4th of July, Todd. It really is, right? Oh man, it's going to be weird. Um, I, I I spend every Fourth of July in Ocean City, and my parents are down there, and my brother and his family, and my aunt and uncle and their kids. And there's, there's no crawfish, right? There's a different holiday. That's, right? that's, that's not a crawfish. That's yeah, pre- it's pre- Preakness crawfish and uh, and crabs on the Fourth of July uh, in Ocean City. But uh, but there's you know thirty or forty of us. We we go every year. We all we stay on the same block every year. We're, we're in four and five different places by now, but all you know confined with all of our traditions and i mean my father called it always called it his favorite week of the year you know and uh my brother's going down uh just his four you know and they'll be nestled in in the condo there but that's it you know we're my my 25 year uh tradition um you know stopping stopping at warren station in, in fenwick for breakfast on the first saturday and you know crab nights on sunday spaghetti nights on tuesday you know like it's uh, it's not there, you know. So I don't know. Like, like Preakness, it's just one of those things that we're going to skip this year. Well, you know, and I was talking to Moeller the other night about the Catonsville Parade, and, you know, they put the chairs up out there. They'd have been up a month ago, right, literally. Sure, sure. And, you know, I'm done talking the Heritage Fair and what it means. And, uh, and, and, you know, I live at the harbor, so it's always people coming down and fireworks. We don't need fireworks this year. There you have fireworks. Every day. Well, dude, what's going on with the fireworks? I mean, you're in the legal space here, Todd Schuller over at Blondell Miller Schuller, and they can find you at damngoodlawyer.com as well. This fireworks thing, they, you're the first one I've talked to about it on the radio. And, you know, I live in a space where I look out the window at 9 o'clock every night and we're like, gunshot or fireworks, right? Um, I, this is not just a Baltimore thing. This is like a national thing. And it's, I, I would think from a legal standpoint and from a hospital standpoint and from a delegate standpoint from where you sat, this is a little disturbing. It's a, it's, it's a little weird to me. I don't, I don't understand it. I don't get it. But I'm assuming people are getting injured. <laughs> I just assume that. Well, not as much. You know, I, uh, certainly the lockdown has kept people from getting hurt at work and, and, getting, and getting in car crashes. You know, uh, there's definitely re- reduced mobility has led to reduced injuries, which has led to, you know, reduced uh, cases around here. So okay, fair enough. So, sometime 18 months from now, uh, we're going to... We're going to suffer a bit of a drought around here, but uh, um, but yeah, no, I, I'm not a big fireworks guy anyway. Like again, with my beach tradition, we're sort of a walk out on the beach with sparklers and whatever 
Uh, God, I haven't you know, had a sparkler in 20 years. You still can the, get sparklers? I don't see them anymore. Oh, yeah, they got the real long ones now up in my Safeway. It's awesome. I'll have, I gotta, yeah, I'll have some you know of them what? bad boys for Saturday. I'm going to tell my wife we got to get some spike. My wife and I have never had a sparkler together. That's true. Oh, man. you got to remedy that. All right. Yeah. I'm gonna do, thank you. See, that's why I keep you around, Todd. I appreciate you guys over there. Mark Miller's going to come on at some point. You let him know, right? I mean, yeah, I, every time we talk, man. Just a every rumor? time we talk. All right. Uh, well. Oops. I did sparklers with Mark Miller because we used to do sparklers on Kane Street back in the day when we were younger. But I haven't, I haven't. T- Why is that that I haven't touched a spark? Because I don't have kids or grandkids. That's sparklers what it is. and those little poppers are like the way to do it. You know, and like I say, especially at the beach, you don't have to go sit in a big fireworks and watch the big display with every. I I used to do it as a kid. I could go to Fullerton Field, uh, and, you know, in Overly and and do the fireworks there, but. For the last 20 years or so, it's just you walk out on the beach, people are setting off mortars, and that's good enough for me. You can kind of see the inlet stuff going on or secrets kind of going off in the distance if you squint. But I've not been a big fireworks crowd guy. It's more like a go and see whatever whatever's available, you know, whatever, whatever's going off around you. Yeah, they're going off out, out my window every night. It's a good thing it doesn't scare my cat, but I know it freaks out people's dogs. Todd Schuler is here. He is with the law firm, our friends down in Essex. I'm holding up my Pizza John's cup just to honor Essex, and I'll get back down there to Al's to see everybody soon, too. Blondell Miller Schuler. Um, you can find him at damngoodlawyer.com, as well as you can uh, 410-687-7878. You can drive by Eastern Avenue and see him. They've been there for about 50 years. Give me a little lowdown on where the legal space is here during this lockdown. Because um, I had Dennis Colossus on at Coons Ford. He said that his body shop's starting to fill up a little bit. That he said people are having accidents again. Yeah, um, we're, co- we're coming back around a little bit. Uh, and like I say, it's, the courts have been more or less closed. Workers' Comp Commission's back open again for in-person hearings, albeit limited and with a significant backlog from being shut down for a couple of weeks. Uh, the district court hearings aren't rolling, at least for accident-type stuff yet. You know, that when you get into outside of the Workers' Comp Commission and into the courts, there's criminal stuff that takes priority and peace orders and, you know, things that have to be done on an emergency basis. And usually the civil law stuff gets pushed out uh, because it's, it's got a little bit less priority. So we know they're not impaneling juries, at least, again, for our stuff until October at the earliest which has led, you know, it's given me more office time. Um, it, it hasn't stopped things from working out because we can still do mediations on the Zoom and settle cases that way. We can still get our depositions done on the Zoom. Uh, it's not ideal, but it's, it's kind of been going down and working out a little bit. So, you know, we're, we're like every other area, we're, we're, we're limping into normalcy, I guess would be a good way to say it, right? Well, I mean, we're all trying to limp into July here. I'm figuring out, is baseball going to exist? Is football going to exist? Are sports going to exist? Uh, as I move all of my traction toward Baltimore Positive and all the things uh, that I am planning on doing with our website and beyond uh, beginning in September. So I've got my hat on. You know I was uh, uh, planning a mayoral run that is a detour. Uh, congratulations to Brandon Scott. Uh, I'm going to focus on Baltimore Positive and all the ways uh, that we can make the place better. One thing I want to give you, you're going down to Nags Head. Have you been down there uh, recently? Because my Nags Head background is really limited, and I, I you know, I told you we were looking for some place to really get away, and I thought about it. I went three times in the 1990s. One of my dearest friends, and actually a dear friend of Mark Miller, uh, a guy named Chip Cowan that we grew up with. who was a tennis player and a biker. Uh, Chip was the guy that had the mongoose back in 1981, and on weekends we were going to Oriole games and Colts games. He was riding his bike in these motocross crosses and doing that sort of thing. He went down to Kill Devil Hills when he was a kid back in the 80s. And, um, and and opened a bike shop, and he's been down there 30 years. He uh, he has a uh, he has a uh, uh, he does the tents and and the uh, the umbrellas and the chairs and all the beach supplies. He does all that stuff for everybody, and he does bikes. And we went down and visited him, and I saw him in the 90s three different times. I took my son down there, but I haven't been to Nags Head or to the Outer Banks since 1997. So it had been 23 years. I've been threatening to take my wife down there, and if you haven't been. 
It really is a spectacular place, and the five-hour trip is the reason I hadn't gone, right? Because it's quicker to get to Ocean City, or you fly down to Florida for 99 bucks or whatever. But it was very, very, um, it, it, it makes me want to go back. Other than the Confederate flags, you know, in the shorts and the people not wearing their, I, 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 as a place to go for a family and what I saw families doing and crabbing and fishing and sunning and all walks of life and economically, you know, all of that, I, I loved it. So last time you were there, give me a little nag. Yeah, so on. actually, we've been going with my wife's family pretty much every other year since my kids were born. My kids wow. are 10 and 7. Okay. So for over the last decade, I bet we've been like four times. But you had and never been as a younger person, or had you been? I had been in like the everybody's married but nobody has kids yet uh, okay. kind of stage. We used to go down like five couples, basically. Uh but, you know, Ocean City is the, the beach of my childhood and will always be my first and only true love. <laughs> but I love those big sandcastles. I love the, the family reunion style. Like, I told you, my Fourth of July tradition in Ocean City is really more built for Outer Banks because we really could take all of the people that, that stay in a series of four and five condos in uh, Ocean City over Fourth of July week, and you can put them in an eight-bedroom house, and everybody chips in, and it's no more expensive than getting all the condos in Ocean City. So uh, I, like, I like that layout. And frankly, it's less um, of a problem in the, in the world of the social distance. Like, you really do. I mean, you got the feel for it, right? Like, you, you got your beachfront space, and then I know you're in a hotel, but you certainly weren't in a in a you know thirty story hotel. The day you know? we left, the day we left on Friday, it was beautiful. Thursday was it was ugly. It rained, so we couldn't get on the beach. So the last day, we're like, we gonna squeeze in some sun. Seventy one degrees at seven a.m. Seventy five at eight a.m. You know, eighty by ten a.m. We squeezed in three and a half. We went onto the beach at seven thirty. And we left at 11 because we had to check out at noon, right? And we did three and a half hours. Dude, we were the only ones on the beach during th- at that time of the day. Now, by yeah. 1 or 2 o'clock in the afternoon, there are, you know, people 20 feet, 40 feet, for, you know, away from you. But it's not 8th Street in Ocean City. You know, it's, yeah, it's not your crew. You, you, you know. have kind of your own piece of beach. And actually, where we used to, we, we're doing Nags Head now, but we've always, or not always, but more recently, the last few trips, if you take the left when you get across the bridge and head up Duck, Duck and yeah. Corolla, and then you get all the way up. The last time we were there, we stayed at the uh, four-wheel drive only beach, which wow. is wild. I mean, like, you really drive on the beach for eight miles before you get to your place. And then there's no streets. There's nothing out there. you got to have... You gotta have a landmark. Somebody's got a flag up. Dude, on I'm there. out on that. There's mosquitoes there. I'm out. Uh, well, I tell you, the last time we went, it was like a hurricane kind of situation. The wells, I think, are like eight feet deep. The place was all swamped out. I think we were probably showering in our own sewage. Like we we Whoa. bit off more than we could chew. We decided let's uh, let's get out of Nags Head, stay in civilization a little bit more this next time. So. Well, you're gonna get better frozen custard that way. Uh, you know, I'm gonna hook you up with some barbecue spots and some custard spots, and you and I can uh, compare and contrast. How about that, Todd? That sounds good. Dot Schuler's here. Uh, Blondell Miller Schuler. Tell everybody about your firm and how to find you and all the do all the uh, the, the fine details as uh, the the legal well, guys so, like you do. Yeah, we're right here on Eastern Avenue, six twenty eight Eastern Avenue. Uh, phone numbers right on the side of the building and, and damngoodlawyer.com. Actually, Mark had found when Mark had first uh, taken over uh, our company from our uh, our founder Bill Blondell. Um, he ha- had just kind of grabbed a couple of websites up and we. we we unearthed his websites that he had grabbed, and <laughs> damngoodlawyer.com just sort of stood out of the pack like, yeah, that's the one we're going to ride. So uh, we, we, we're, we're easily found at damngoodlawyer.com and, and right here on Eastern Avenue. And, and certainly, you know, we, we practice in every jurisdiction in the state of Maryland. I'm, I'm out in Cumberland, and I'm down in Cambridge. I mean, we, we get around. and, and I drove uh, through Waldorf the other day for the first time in a while. How about that? I had a deposition in Waldorf. My first live deposition was in Waldorf, uh, you know, coming back, and it was Thursday. I was down there uh, 
down there on Thursday. Well, I so. drove past all the baseballs. I drove past Bowie and Norfolk <laughs> on the way to, to Nags Head. So, you know, I got my fill of Maryland, and I drove the whole eastern shore. I got to see, like, Snow Hill and all these, you know, cool Salisbury. We drove the eastern shore back. So, Maryland, it's a big state out there if you got a deposition at uh, Crisfield somewhere, right? Yeah, but it's, uh, you know, it's a beautiful state, you know? So, we got we – got, we we have a lot of Southern Maryland is as you as you saw its charm. I mean, it's pretty cool down there in the Eastern Shore. And get out in Western Maryland, and then we have some great pockets around here too. You know. Well, uh, you know, for for all of us hanging in this thing, Fourth of July, waiting on baseball, hoping for football, trying to sneak a little bit of family, a little bit of beach time safely in. I just want everybody to be safe. I got one friend fighting for her life in the hospital right now. I have another friend uh, that came down with COVID over the weekend. These are you know longtime Dundalk Facebook friends of mine. Uh, so we're lighting a candle for my friend Monica and sending her some strength, uh, and as well as others. And and in you know for my friend that contracted over the weekend, I visited with another friend of mine down in. Princess Anne and Fruitland on the Eastern Shore. Dundalk friend who contracted COVID on the Eastern Shore. Um, uh, and she feels like she got it, at, believe it or not, at a fruit stand, crazy enough. Um, you know, on the Eastern Shore, uh, you know, they, they said they let their guard down, right? Literally, they said, I let my guard down. Don't let your guard down. I guess that's more than anything. Uh, that That's the, the, the good legal advice you give them, right, Todd? That's it. I like the don't let your guard down. Mark uh, was saying it the other day where it feels like we're toward the end of a journey, whether we're not, we are or not, and you know, it comes back here in Maryland. But what a shame it would be now, you know, with with you know, thirty some odd days of reduced hospitalizations in Maryland, and and the numbers moving in the right direction. What, how 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 angry would you be if if you stubbed your toe now and and you know exposed everyone you know that that you work with and and you interact with to to it and. Uh, you got to get across the finish line, you know? Well, the public shaming part in my world is about sports, right? Like, the public shaming on my timeline is, hey, I want to have football this year. Wear a mask, you know? And I'm thinking to myself, well, you know, if that's your motivation, that's cool. I want football, too. It's what I do for a living, right? But... um Without wearing a mask, we're we're not going to have much of anything until we until we get a vaccine for this. And and I you know I think for those of us who who went to school and studied a little bit, we sort of realized this back in March, didn't we? Maybe not intellectually, but we caught on pretty quickly that that there's not going to be a quick exit out of this. We're not going to buy our way out of this, right? Well, we did it. That's the disappointing part. Is here in Maryland, and in most of the Northeast, we did it. You know, we 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 stayed inside. We followed the rules, and we've seen declines in hospitalizations and declines in infections for the last month, like they promised we would. And now we're just going to, all of that is going to be for nothing, you know, because people are flying up from Florida as we speak. And, uh, you know, we'll, where, there's, where there is fuel, a fire will burn. And, you know, unfortunately, and I don't see us going back indoors. I don't think there's the political will or, or the basic will of people to, to lock down again. So it could be that we did it all for nothing, you know, if if certain spots of the country can't get their act together. Stay safe, man. Wash your hands, cover your face, enjoy your 4th of July, eat a hot dog or something, some watermelon. Do so. By the way, National Fried Chicken Day is Monday. It's Chicken Palooza at Royal Farms this month, so we got that going for us. So I'm trying to focus on the positives that we have here, right? Like And, what, and the one sport that will not be canceled but will be moved indoors into the air condition where Joey Chestnut thinks he can put away 77 dogs in 10 minutes. Gross. He's calling. He's going to break the record by three. That is a 4th of July tradition that I don't miss. He has visited with WNST in the past, and I, uh, I took a picture with him at the, uh, at the All-Star Game in Washington two summers ago. So I, I have come in contact with Joey Chestnut, but I, I don't need to eat like that. You know, I mean, I was overweight. <laughs> you have your one dog. I, I was overweight half my life. I, you know, I, I mean, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm all about moderation, even when it comes to Tarka ice cream, Todd. I know you appreciate that. Hey, tell Mark Miller that at some point, I mean, I almost busted out the 35-year high school pictures last month on June 2nd. It was the 35th anniversary of our high school graduation. So tell Mark Miller he can run, but he can't hide. I know where he is in Essex. You got it. 
Todd Schuler joining us here. Blondell, Miller, Schuler, damngoodlawyer.com. Former delegate Todd Schuler, our pal. Talking sports, talking life, talking COVID, talking Nags Head. And uh, I will uh, turn him on to at least some good Carolina barbecue and frozen custard down in Nags Head. Nasty at WNST.net finds me. Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Snapchat. Great conversations. Fourth of July. Lots of baseball in here this week. Lots of Americana and some Baltimore positive. Stay with us.